So I fancied getting out, just doing a little drive and talking to you about a car I picked up in the summer. Um, I fancied a bit of a change and I had a V8 itch that I wanted to scratch. So I managed to get myself a Porsche Cayenne S. It's the 955, so the first gen, um, ugly as hell, but it's a lot of car for the money. So um, I thought I'd just give you a little bit of a walk around it, give you a few of my impressions. And I know um, there have been some other videos and some chats recently online with Piston Heads as well about uh, how much value these cars are and how just how ugly they are. Um, but do you know what? I've had it, I've done what, 4,000 miles in it now, and um, I'm really happy actually. It's, it's not a bad car at all. So I just wanted to raise a couple of points about this car that I picked up in July. Uh, it's a 2006 on a 56 plate Porsche Cayenne S, 4.5 litre V8, naturally aspirated, about 340 horsepower. It's a little bit of a change from my last one, which was a Jag XFS which was a 3-litre twin-turbo V6 diesel. Um, not doing the miles and had a V8 itch that I wanted to scratch, so I thought I'd um, see how much I could get one of these for. And looking through Auto Trader and Gumtree and some of the classifieds, managed to uh, find this one, which was a really good example, um, for uh, less than £6,000, which was great. It had 73,500 miles on it. And um, do you know what? It had been pretty well looked after, to be perfectly honest. So uh, I kind of jumped at the chance and picked it up um, about four months ago, and uh, yeah, haven't haven't looked back since. Actually, I'm I'm quite impressed with it. So the price was just brilliant. So I had a four and a half litre V8 for less than six grand, and uh, it, nothing's really gone wrong with it just yet. Uh, so why do I love this car that everyone else seems to really dislike? It's got a four and a half litre V8 engine. It pulls really well. It swallows everything that I throw at it. Family, bikes, Christmas trees, tip run, all that other stuff that goes along with it. And it also means that I can just kind of get around no matter what the weather, no matter where I'm going, on or off road. Not that I take it off road that much to be perfectly honest, but uh, it's handy. It just seems to do everything and never really complains, which I'm quite surprised about, to be perfectly honest. Um, being a 14-year-old Porsche, I thought it might be a bit more temperamental in the first um, four, four and a half, five thousand miles that I've done in it, but actually it's been incredibly well behaved. Two parking sensors and um, a change of brakes, that's all that's been required of it so far. So, can't really grumble at that now, particularly not because I paid less than £6,000 for this car and for what it gives me and for how it, okay, not so much how it looks, but how it behaves, how it performs, its manners is just uh, it's absolutely impeccable. So I wouldn't swap this for anything at the moment, well maybe an Audi S8, but uh, that's still big and pain in the backside to park when you go to the supermarkets. But this has got a set of all season tyres on it. It's been fantastic the couple of times I've taken it off road. Uh, it's just a pain in the backside to wash because it's so really big and uh, I can't get across the roof properly. But apart from that, I'm happy with it. I also really like the quality in this car. You can really feel it. It's a kind of a testament to the, uh, I guess, the engineering, but also the, the parts department and kind of what they've chosen to put in it. It's worn its miles so well, 73,500 miles it had when I picked it up and um, it just looks so fresh. The seats still really got a good colour in them, really supportive and uh, I just I can't grumble. The switches, none of them are marked, everything uh, still looks absolutely spot on. Okay, the sat nav looks a bit old and dated but uh, you don't really rely on that too much. I guess it would have been nice if it had DAB, but I guess it was a little bit too old for that. So um, just one of those pure Highway 600 kits uh, for about 40 odd quid. It seems to have done the trick perfectly well. Uh, managed to kind of hide all the aerial and everything and, and tuck all the wires through. And thankfully, because this has got six 12 volt sockets, I've got it plugged in. I don't even have to worry about uh, kind of hard wiring it in because it's, it's all plugged in. There are two. 12 volt sockets in the passenger footwell just underneath the dashboard so that seems to have done incredibly well 
everything just works and works well and it's such a comfortable ride that was one of the things that I was thought I was going to miss the most about the XF and it was a fantastic ride but I can't grumble with this one it's uh, being on the motorway or taking it down some country lanes it's uh, it just soaks up the bumps and you kind of you still feel fresh and everything else and all those other cliches that you do after a long drive but it, it yeah what can you say and then you just get it out onto the open road you take it into a kind of national speed limit area and then it just sounds glorious i guess the only thing you have to be really careful about is um, straying too far from a fuel station so um, i'm getting about 18 around town i would say um, and then about 23, 24 on a run. The most I've had was 28, or just over 28 according to the computer. Um, but I did sit through a lot of 50 mile an hour average speed zones on the M4 that day. Um, it doesn't feel too bad really, the trade off for fuel economy against what this is giving me. Um, on a back with my XF, on a really drive Miss Daisy run, I could probably push the trip computer somewhere close to 50 um, and see that drop quite a lot when you were when you were pushing on anyway so you know what and I'm hardly doing the miles now certainly not compared to what I used to so it doesn't feel too bad in all honesty it sounds great blasting around the lake so a question I get asked occasionally is um, should you buy one of these it really kind of depends on your uh, your personal preference really it's pig ugly it's really thirsty and it has the potential to absolutely empty your wallet if um, certain things go wrong but uh, in all honesty I've absolutely loved it having this car on the drive I did have one back in January um, but unfortunately the gearbox in that was uh, well shot so uh, the garage uh, rightly and kindly took it back and um, it just didn't get replaced during lockdown. They had so many issues trying to get everything sorted on it. Um, it was just a uh, bit of a nightmare, to be honest. So, happily took my money back and uh, went and found my own, which was this one. It's one of the things that's probably worth mentioning, particularly in the current climate, and that's the heated seats. So this car's got four heated seats, two in the front, two in the back. The middle one misses out, but don't worry about that. There are five levels to this seat heating, and I've never, ever taken it up more than three. I reckon five could probably melt cheese, to be perfectly honest. So this is fantastic, and with a heated steering wheel as well. And they're kind of, they're pretty much warmed up by 30 seconds, a minute into your journey which is fantastic, particularly when you're uh, kind of on the school run first thing in the morning, trying to uh, warm yourself up and just can't wake yourself up. It's brilliant, it's an absolute godsend. Sounds really daft and uh, kind of proper uh, pansy really, but uh, I'll swap it, I'll swap it for the world. So would I buy this again? Yeah, I would. I really would, it's offered so much uh, relatively in a cloud lay initially. The brakes, not the cheapest in the world, but uh, certainly better than the £2,000 quoted by Porsche. And um, just being able to kind of do a few little things myself, or the ability to do them without having to take everything apart or have to take it back to the main dealer is really appealing. And I think it's just. Um, one of those ones that hopefully will remain on the drive for a while to come because it's uh, certainly looks like it's going to be the best car to get me through the winter certainly on these roads I've got a set of winter wheels and tyres in the garage if I really need it but I don't think I will so uh, yeah uh, if someone came along and offered to swap me for a 911 then tip runs 
I wouldn't be able to put the bikes in. I wouldn't be able to do half the things I've done in this so far. So as much maligned as it is, people love to knock it. It's just been a fantastic car for the money. So there's very little out there that beats it for me. Thanks for watching.